Afternoon guys, hope you're well. Uh, welcome to webinar number 12 of uh, the Independent Gym webinar series. I think of a new name every time we introduce these now. So um, we're, uh, we're full steam ahead. Um, it's been a decent week. Last week, Boris said we could reopen come 12th of April, as long as nothing else goes wrong. So um, fingers crossed for that, six weeks today. And we'll, uh, we'll open in our doors, unless you're a class-based provider, but we'll talk about that another time. Um, Today's webinar we're hosted by eGym. So eGym are a brand new partner with ours, a strategic partner for 2021. So you'll be seeing these guys around a bit more. Um, really good, uh, good guys. I've known them for a little while, so really pleased that, to be able to work with us. Um, so thank you for coming on board, guys. Um, the webinar is hosted by Stefan and Chris. I've got a bit of a background. Chris has been in the professional services team for eGym for a number of years, dealing with some of the biggest gyms and organizations across Europe and America, I do believe. Um, Big industry, big industry experience as well, 13 years in the UK industry, so that's great news. And Stefan has worked at eGym for five years now. Um, I think, Stefan, you're the uh, UK Customer Experience Manager? Correct, UK Customer Success Manager yeah, for the success UK. Man, success and... Manager, that's the one. Yeah, that's fine. So, um, yeah, fantastic. Thanks for going on board, guys. Um, very quickly, I'm going to hand over to you. We've got 20, 20 minutes or so of, um, of, of presentation, and then we'll have a Q&A at the end. If anybody has got any questions, please send them through uh, the chat feature. And then we'll go from there. So uh, on that note, over to you guys. Super, thanks, Rob. So uh, like you said, we're here to talk about uh, eGym and what can offer independent gyms in, well, hopefully from 12th of April and beyond. So just to quickly cover off for those of you who aren't hugely familiar with us, um, who or what is eGym? So some of you may know us from our sort of uh, connected gym floor strength training equipment. Some of you might know us from the old NetPulse uh, company, which became part of eGym for our mobile solutions. In reality, we're a combination of all of that. So we're a hardware and software company. Um, we have a very strong presence kind of internationally. We've got uh, over 2000 gyms using our physical hardware products, and we've got over 9000 gyms using our software products, which equates about 18 million users. So, you know, we're a fairly big organization in this space. We're not sort of a fly by night company coming in and going, yeah, we've got an app and then kind of disappearing six months later. We're here, we're been established for you know, many years, and we've got a really good sized client base um, to see us through into the future. Um, and we do have a kind of fairly open integration philosophy. Uh, we will generally work with anyone who will work with us. So when you think about um, you know, some brands that say, oh yeah, you've got to buy our hardware, our bikes, our software, our gym equipment, our software, and everything is all going to be from one player. Uh, we know that's not really realistic because you're going to already have equipment or other software products in your in your estate. So we generally work with anyone and we integrate with everything. So you can pick and choose best in class products or best price products uh, for, for your business. And we'll try and work with everybody uh, around. So something which we wanted to include was a slide we had in this deck a year ago when we were talking about what does the world look like in terms of coronavirus? Uh, because that's generally been kind of the news on everyone's lips, which we've been living through for the last year. So we were sort of making these predictions it's going to be a 12 to 18 month um, process in terms of, you know, getting through, getting a vaccine. And again, we're pretty much on track with that. You know, we have seen those second waves. We have seen those lockdowns. We have seen people focusing more on immunity health rather than just general health and fitness as well. Um, and, you know, sadly, within the industry, we have seen a lot of trouble for our smaller gyms and for our larger gyms, actually, where being closed for the majority of a year has kind of really, uh, really caused some revenue and cash flow problems. We've seen members dropping out of their gym membership at a rate of about 30% nationally uh, for people who just, you know, don't want to keep that subscription running where they don't know when they can return. And a lot of gyms, uh, big and small, have been faced with sort of huge financial problems. Um, because they just can't afford to keep their rents and their staffing going when they have no revenue. Um, so that, I mean, that's pretty much come true throughout this year. I think into 2021, we're looking into a way better scenario, especially in the latter half of the year. And what we'd want to talk about today is some of the features, tools, and kind of concepts we have that can help you kind of ride through this process, deliver some better customer service, better customer experience, and really focus on keeping your businesses running well rather than with like endless new administration and problems that are going to come with operating in a post-pandemic world. So in this kind of 
2020, 2021, we've had like the, the hokey cokey of gym openings. We've been open, close, open, close, restricted. You, you can do this, you can't do that. It's been confusing for operators. It's been confusing as hell for members. Um, and we do know when we come back, hopefully on April the 12th, we can open, but it's going to be different. There will be restrictions. There will be challenges. It's, it's going to be kind of not business as usual. Um, and we, we've got some features and some products and some solutions here, which we want to talk to you about, which are going to help you do that. Um, I normally work with some of our kind of the largest chains kind of internationally. And we, these kind of software products used to be sort of tens of thousands of pounds of like custom development. So you could, you could, you know, offer like online bookings through an app and tra tracking your workouts through an app. And over the last couple of years, we've come a long way with this. You know, you don't need to be spending tens of thousands of pounds from custom software anymore. We've got some great flexible tools here, which are well within the range of affordability for, you know, small operators, for small uh, custom bespoke independents. Even when you don't have kind of, you know, full on membership systems, we can offer you solutions that can help in, in these environments. Um, so this new business model to think about, um, you've got to legally be able to open. So fingers crossed, 12th of April, we become legal to open at least some of our facilities. You know, you might not be able to do workout classes, but you can probably do the gym floor. You might be able to do a swimming pool if you have one. Uh, you probably can do outdoor workouts. There's going to be restrictions there. It's going to be, you know, complicated to administer and complicated to keep your customers up to date on what's going on. But the thing that's going to be most important about all of this is the members. Um, and I don't mean purely from like a, a pithy customer service, love your customer point of view. I mean, from a purely nuts and bolts financial point of view as well, your customers coming, paying their subscriptions and turning up to the gym are going to be the things keeping your business alive and keeping it running through 2021. So we've got to make sure our customers are happy, they're safe, and they want to come to the gym if they feel unsure about coming back because they don't know what, what is 2021 world going to look like. We know we can reassure them and bring them in. Um, one of the biggest things is around this idea of having to pre-book your space in the gym to manage your capacity. You know, before when you had like space for 100 people in your gym and you can now only have 50, you need a way to like, cap at 50. You need a way for people to know when they're going to turn up, can they get in? Um, because if you, if you just turn up and the gym's already got its 50 people and it's full, you're standing outside in the rain. And, you know, that's not going to inspire you to come back again and keep up those health those health kind of activities. Um, and as well, we talk, I talked earlier about the huge financial problems people have and a number of gyms have gone away. Um, you know, really big brands have gone, small independents have gone as well. And there's gonna be this ocean of gym members who are now kind of gymless. They had a membership, their gym died. And now come April, they're gonna be right, I wanna go back to the gym again. My current gym's gone, where do I go? So hopefully some of these tools as well will give you an extra string in your bow. So when you're pitching to customers, when you're doing some sales outreach, you can say, hey, we've got all these things that keep you happy, keep you safe, keep you motivated that your competitors don't have. So when someone's shopping around looking for a place to join, you're top of mind, you've got the best solutions, you've got the best service, and that will help drive those new customers back into your building, rebuild the numbers you've lost, and hopefully grow from that as well into the future. So we do have a product which we call the branded member app. This is our kind of customer facing product that people have on their phone and kind of use as, as a user. You know, we have the hardware, we have the staff apps as well, but today we want to talk about just what the member has in their hand. Uh, I'm going to talk about the basic features of this as well. We do have some more advanced options, extra bolt-ons and WYSI features, but you know, for, for today we want to talk about the nuts and bolts, things you can do to make your gym run more efficiently, keep customers safe, keep customers happy. So the first thing is, is bookings. And for years we thought about bookings as like workout classes. You know, you book your body combat, you book your Zumba, you know, at four o'clock in the afternoon on a day and you have a great workout. But that's kind of not where we are now. We need to be booking people onto the shop floor for every single session. And you could do this with like a whole membership online booking experience software package. It can be really quite expensive for you to set up and hard to maintain. 
uh, we offer a service where you can just integrate a Google Calendar with the mobile app to allow you to make bookings. So Google Calendar is free. Get a Google account, sign up, and you're done. So you can set up all your sessions there, have all your capacities, your opening times, your closing times, uh, any kind of particular details or requirements you want to publish as well, you can put in there. So when customers want to book a space, they just whip out their phone, they can see what's available, they can see how many spaces are left at a particular time of day and reserve their slot. If they change their mind, they can cancel the booking and free that slot back open again. So you're not having to do lots of manual work. I've seen people kind of doing this with like a big pen and paper solution and just like going through like a page per day with a biro. And they were spending like an entire like full-time job equivalent time kind of manually filling in this paper pad you know, on the phone, taking reservations. And I'm like, yeah, this is, this is 2021. You know, I can pick up my phone. I can get an Uber, you know, to my house in a minute. Why am I doing this by hand? This feels horrific. So this is something you can do just with Google Calendar, just with the app, and allow all your reservations to happen in there. It's super, super quick, super easy, not very expensive at all because you're using Google as a back end. So you can get people into your shop floor, and into classes when you offer them. And even if you want to offer some virtual classes, you can put them in here as well and people can jump into a live stream. Um, another thing about coming back is gonna be kind of guidance because everyone on this call is like a fitness professional. You work out in industry with customers and you know, customers, they need help. They don't know what they're gonna do. You know, they turn up, they go on the treadmill kind of every week, they don't see any benefits and then they quit. Um, so within the app, we offer the ability to create training plans. And these are made up of like a spectrum of activities joined together. So we've got about 1400 different individual exercises on our database and you can build a training plan from there, just like you would for like personal training and goal setting and things like that in the traditional way. But you can build them straight into the app and you can have a catalog of them which are ready to go um, for things you can do in the building. And you can put together some guides for people to do when they're at home because you know, given you know, rest lockdown restrictions may change um, post April, or some people just might not have the freedom to be out and about quite as much as they'd like. So you can put workout plans in there for at home or in the gym to keep people motivated, keep them excited and give them that guidance they need. And when I was talking about your competitive advantage, if you can offer guidance to customers, you're doing way better than most are right now. A lot of people just have a gym full of equipment I just hope people turn up and use it. Um, what you can do as well, which is kind of really interesting, is if you think about kind of where the congested points in your gym are, you know, it's traditionally going to be like treadmills, bikes, ellipticals, because they're like the popular things that everyone can figure out and they're kind of super easy to use. You can build a training plans in here that intentionally instruct people to spread out across your venue. So, you know, you can put them on the weights in that corner, on the elastic ropes over there and move them around. So you reduce congestion on the shop floor so people aren't kind of tripping over each other trying to get on the same piece of equipment. And you're stopping kind of people getting too close from like a social distancing point of view. So you can actually affect your physical gym layout by kind of programming in particular activities. Um, again, um, these can be set up like for your whole gym. You can set them up for individual people as well. So if you've got a customer coming in they're recovering from an injury uh, of some sort, you can build a training plan for that individual that takes out kind of the injured part of their body and treats it differently. So again, you used to do this on paper with program cards, you know, with a, with a biro in like a binder in the gym. You don't need that. You can put it in the app. They've got it with them wherever they go. They can look at it anytime and they can track the workouts wherever they are. And in terms of kind of tracking workouts, I mean, I don't need to tell you guys this because you all work in the gym industry, but people who track their exercises and people who record them and monitor them are scientifically proven to stay longer. And that's going to be a really key thing. You know, it's keeping members longer, keeping their subscriptions running, keeping that revenue coming into your building. So we allow people to track their workouts in every possible way. You can manually record a workout. You can type in, yeah, I went for a run. It was this far. I lifted these weights on these reps. If you've got connected smart gym equipment, we integrate with that. So that information comes into the app automatically. 
if you've got a wearable device like, uh, like an Apple Watch or a Fitbit, you can connect that to your app and those workouts come through automatically. Um, and we've even got a really cool feature called X Capture. So if you've got like the gym equipment that isn't smart, isn't connected, has like the LED display on the front, you can just take a photo of that at the end of a workout and our app will figure out what was on that screen and translate it into data and log the workout for you automatically. Um, I love that because when you're in the gym that doesn't have like the most expensive equipment or the newest equipment, you can still capture things really quickly and without much effort. I mean, for me, I have enough tr you know, trouble getting the energy to go to the gym in the first place. I see finding the energy to manually write down what I did is like a step too far. If I can get that done automatically, fantastic. And that's what we kind of offer in here. The ability to track all the workouts and see all those outcomes with very little effort from the customer. So you've got the planning and now you've got the tracking and then we can look at the monitoring and you can fulfill that whole kind of user journey, understanding what is their progress looking like. Um, so like I said, we do connect to wearables. We connect to essentially every major wearable on the market. Uh, we have a really great Apple Health integration as well. So um, if you are using kind of um, like an Apple Watch, we get all the bio data from that as well, not just kind of your steps and workouts, um, which gives you a really great experience. Um, but if you're just using like a regular Fitbit, still super useful, gets all your workouts coming through with no effort. Um, something which I think we kind of gloss over a lot, but is actually really useful is push notifications. Um, so I probably get a couple of hundred emails a day. I like to think I read them all, but I know I probably don't. Um, but push notifications kind of bypass that. They appear on your phone, in the notifications, on the lock screen to let you know your gym is trying to tell you something. And again, that's built into our product. And you can send push notifications to your entire membership base to, or to individual users or groups of users, whatever you want. They can get those messages, you can send them out and get them in, you know, in front of people's eyes without worrying about being lost in their inbox. And that's kind of really useful right now when operational things are going to be changing quite frequently. You know, if you, know, you need to remind people you need to pre-book to come onto the gym floor, if you need to remind people to bring um, like a mask, if you need to remind people about hand sanitizer in the building, all of those things, you have, a, you have a direct link to their home screen on their phone to send them those messages and remind people about what operational things are going to be important for them to have a successful visit and for you to keep your business running smoothly as an operator as well. Um, so kind of the last part of that equation in terms of kind of prescribing logging is kind of the results. Uh, we have a feature called activity levels, uh, which kind of is a way to measure how much effort you are putting into your workouts. And you can sort of set goals around that and you can benchmark your stuff around that. Um, what's really important about activity levels is it is kind of arbitrarily offset by your base physical ability. So if you're someone like Stefan who's super fit, or you're someone like me who's in a bit of a COVID deconditioned kind of way, as long as you put in the same effort, we're going to get the same points. So if we both ran 5K right now, I would probably get more points than Stefan because I had to put in way more effort to drag my COVID tummy around that racetrack. But it's a great way to monitor what your customers are doing, especially at this point where there's going to be some people who are pretty deconditioned. There's going to be some people who spent all lockdown kind of doing burpees in their back garden. It's a nice leveler to let you know how hard your members are working. Uh, within that, there's kind of a gold, silver, bronze, platinum kind of measurement system. And it even tells you what those different activity levels is going to do to your health, not in terms of general health, but also things like your immuno response as well. So um, it is worth mentioning, we do have like a whole sports science division who designed this. So we have sort of medically accurate data from the WHO about what these kind of activity levels will do for your personal health. And the last kind of big part of this analysis is a product feature we call BioAge. Uh, BioAge is really great for motivation because it's really, really easy. Because if you, you know, ask people about, oh, what reps they did, what pace, what cadence, you know, what they lifted, all of that, it's a lot of numbers. It's really confusing, especially if you're not like a proper gym goer. But BioAge takes all of your body measurements, all of your strength tests, all of your workouts you're doing, 
and will give you a number which is represented as an age. So it will measure you against strength, cardio, and metabolic performance. And it will say, right, you know, you are physically, um, say, 38 years old, but your bio age is 45 years old. And you know you're not in a sort of the peak of health you probably want to be in that age. And it's an easily understood number. You go, oh, yeah, I'm 10 years worse off than I should be. That's probably not great. But as you do the workouts, you see that nice, big, simple number notching down back towards your real age. And you can understand, yeah, I'm making progress. I can see I've made progress before I've had to buy like a smaller pair of trousers. And it's a nice motivator to remind people that they are making progress, even if they can't quite see it physically yet. And, you know, as they get better, as they get fitter, as they recover, they start going below their natural age and down to this sort of optimum age sort of peak physical fitness exercise of the age of about 21. So they can say, yeah, I can see my progress. I can see where I'm going. I know I can keep up this sort of gym routine to keep this kind of level of health. Um, and again, we do have an extra feature uh, called gym ranking. Now, this kind of does depend on on what kind of gym you have. If you're kind of a fairly kind of competitive kind of gym, it's kind of kind of high energy specialist, uh, kind of a leaderboard for the month is really great fun for people kind of competing to the, the top. You know, who wants to be putting in the most effort that month? Um, but if you've got kind of fairly more chill, relaxed, kind of, hey, just kind of turn up and do something kind of gym, this may not be as relevant for you, um, but you can still implement it. You can opt out of this as a customer if you want. So. You know, if you want to keep your proper workouts private, you can keep them private. But if you are kind of a small competitive kind of fun gym, this is a great way to build a bit of banter between customers, keep them excited, keep them coming back to maintain kind of their point at the top of the leaderboard. And you can also, if you want, and this is again, it's this nice piece of engagement to remind customers you're there and you're doing things, is to set up challenges within the app. Now, I, I kind of remember back in the day, you'd have like a big whiteboard on the wall. You'd be writing down everyone's scores for their gym challenges. Um, you know, that's a lot of effort. That's a lot of fuss. And also under GDPR, it gets super weird as well. Um, but you can put your gym challenges in the app and they can contribute towards these, you know, from home if they want to. If you're doing a workout in your garden, you can log it into the challenge. So you can put challenges around kind of how much time they're working out, how many times they've worked out. They've gone a particular distance if they've done something for a particular length of time. You can set challenges around all those kind of metrics to kind of give someone a short term goal, something short term, something achievable, something they'll feel kind of powerful when they complete it. And even if you don't kind of want to be like super competitive, there's normally people who might say reward the person who's at the top of the leaderboard at the end of the challenge. You don't have to do that. What I kind of like doing is anyone who completes a challenge. Um, they go into like a prize draw to win something. So, you know, if a hundred people work really hard, they beat the challenge I set them for the month, they can go to a prize draw, win something fabulous in the gym. It might be some personal training time. It might be some merchandise. It might be a big stack of protein bars. Um, you know, whatever I've got around, whatever I can afford to give, um, you can build that into the package. You make it exciting and you give people something to aim for. So those are kind of the features I wanted to talk about. And I hope you kind of, can see how operationally these are going to be really useful for kind of driving customer interaction, driving customer attendance, keeping them excited, keeping them motivated. Uh, because you know, happy, excited, motivated members attend more. The more they attend, the longer they stay, the more direct debits they pay you, and the more successful your business will end up becoming. So I'm going to hand over to Stefan now, who's going to talk about uh, a special offer we're running uh, with our current member app. Correct. Thank you, Chris. Um, thanks for introducing all the different uh, features and functionalities. Um, now that we understand what the product can do and what the benefits are, I'm sure the question will be, OK, so am I going to be able to afford it? How much is it? Um, and therefore, I would like to briefly um, touch on what our special offer is, because we're also new in this group um, and it's really, really important for eGym to have a successful um, you know, partnership with operators to also support the industry. Um, what we thought would be uh, would be very great is, you know, just to give you the opportunity to try this out for 90 days for free. No strings attached. Basically, you get the free version of our branded member app with all the features that Chris touched on earlier. You can try it out for 90 days. I'm going to be there to guide you through 
uh, not only the implementation process, but also the launch, how to use the product continuously. You'll be part of our, um, of our community. So we have a, a closed community in which I support all our existing customers with best practices, uh, et cetera. Um, and this will just, as I say, a free trial of our brand, branded member app with no strings attached. And I'm gonna be there to support you. Um, so there will be no upfront fees for the, um, for the build or the implementation of this app. There's no commitment, we just support you. Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically what, what we would like to offer you. Um, if you would be interested in continuing after nine days, of course, there will be an option um, for having the same app for uh, roughly hundred pounds per month which amounts to uh, 25 per week. Um, and I always say, okay, uh, if we relate this to, to membership numbers, say you have a member who pays, or your, your base membership price would be 33 pounds or 30 pounds. Um, if all those tools could allow you to have, you know, three members stay a month more, then the app would already pay for itself. You know, just to, to give you a little idea um, of how it could potentially look like if you decided to continue. But as I said, it's a free trial with no strings attached for 90 days. Um, and we are very happy to, to support you um, and to start that journey with you. So that is our exclusive offer, which I believe you can also find um, on the independent gym website. Um, but if there are any questions, we're gonna have a and a session right now where we are happy to take any question that you, that you may have um, and add our thoughts to it. Fantastic, guys. That's really good. Thank you for that. Um, so yeah, anybody you have, if you do have any questions, uh, just fire them through the, um, the chat feature at the bottom. I've made a notes of, of some myself as they're coming up. Some of them are sort of product related, but sort of service as well. So hopefully you can answer some of these. First thing I thought, the X capture feature, that sounds pretty cool. We can just take a picture of the screen. Yeah. Um, so, so I know if I was uh, if I was using the, uh, the app, I'd probably make sure I was running next to somebody who was quicker than me and could run further. I'll take a picture of their screen, but uh, that's just my laziness coming through, I think, on that one. Um, Around the, the the man the branded app itself, um, and, and apps in general, how how are you seeing in terms of the rise of popularity of apps for gyms? Because it seems to be something that's spoke about a lot in the group and just in general. And I think historically, having an app was always an expensive uh, sort of investment. So how are you how are you seeing that in in the industry in terms of gyms taking up the app and other apps in general? Yeah, I think it's been it's been a really interesting thing because. We started off in this world of, oh yeah, we want an app so I can make bookings. It's really kind of transactional idea. Like I want to make a booking. I don't want to do it over the telephone or in person. So I have an app for that. But that's kind of become table stakes for most people. And so this whole idea now of like tracking workouts, motivating and goal setting and kind of customer engagement has become super important. And we're seeing a lot of people have now got this mindset of like, their website is for like attracting new customers. But the actual touch point for existing customers is the app because it's always in the hand, it's always in their pocket, and it's something really easy for them to interact with, you know, on a regular basis. Um, and certainly by having that kind of breadth of features, you know, it's not just bookings; it is, you know, workout tracking, workout planning, motivation, goal setting, social interaction, all in one place has been super powerful for us. Um, and we've seen kind of real kind of use cases where. When people kind of go from not having the app, but you know, they had a website that had online bookings already, but they go from that to having the app, they're seeing like really noticeable improvements in customer kind of visit rates. Um, I think after like six months, we saw you know, a sample group attending kind of once more per week just because they'd installed the app and they were getting extra motivation for it. We've seen kind of people keeping their memberships, you know, for several months longer uh, because of that extra level of motivation interaction they're having. Um, so yeah, it's kind of stopped being kind of a transactional thing and has become part of a whole relationship with the gym. Definitely. And it also it allows members to also, you know, become more excited about the facility because they can see, okay, there's something, you know, the facility is modernized in terms of, you know, a digital offering. And I think what's what's also really important for operators is, you know, that you not only give them an app, but also because an app requires continuous engagement, um, that you also support um, not only the operators, but also the members on that journey, right? Um, there is 
is basically um, a continuous process um, that members really enjoy. And if you're able to, you know, implement some best practice examples that we share um, to engage your members, that's something that is really valuable um, and adds a lot of, you know, per perceived value to a membership. Awesome, fantastic. I think, yeah, I think you're right in the sense that apps are becoming more more every day now, aren't they? And it's almost yeah. the case if you haven't got one, how are you perceived as opposed to what you can offer through that app, which is good. Absolutely. So the eGym the e branded app, is um, how, how quick and how easy is it to, for a gym to get set up with, with the app? Mm -hmm. So essentially what you would do is you would reach out to me and we have one more slide at the end of this presentation with my contact details. Again, the offer is also on your website. Um, so basically you would reach out to me. Um, if you have any questions, we can schedule another meeting where you're then uh, able to, you know, raise your individual questions where we can discuss your individual situation at your facility, uh, you know, clarify all the, the questions, discuss comments, etc. Um, and then if you say, okay, that is very interesting, I would like to take part. Um, or I would like to take advantage of this offer, um, then we can we can basically start the process. I will then reach out internally to our teams and we start the implementation process that I also um, then guide the operator through. So it's a very easy and very quick um, process of the implementation. Um, and then within a few weeks, you can basically start with your, with your uh, app. Literally within a couple of weeks, you could be up and running. Correct. That sounds good. Yeah. And in terms of the app itself, is it is it branded up in the gym's uh, name, uh, logos, imagery, or is it? And how would they find it in the in the app store? How would a member search for it? So there's definitely an option um, to get your your app branded. Um, but what we really want to do is we want to deliver an uh, an app as quickly as possible. Um, so there, there are different options. What we can do is we can make it, we can give it a neutral branding, deliver an app as quickly as possible, also within the free trial, you know, just to get operators started as quickly as possible so they can uh, get their members familiarized with, uh, with all the features, et cetera. But there's also, and that's why we call it branded member app, the option to, you know, include your own branding um, in terms of an app icon, the colors, um, that you would like uh, the app to have, the widgets, etc. Um, so this is definitely possible. Um, but if you want to start with your app as quickly as possible, we would just, you know, give you a neutral branding, get your name on it, um, and then basically members would have a look um, at the app store, download the app, um, assign themselves to to your individual facility, um, and then they're ready to go. So that sounds good. How are you finding um, uptake from members of the gyms to download in the app? And is there any tips that you'd, you'd recommend to, to improve the, the uptake? Um, yeah, um, so the kind of uptake varies tremendously based on the kind of company you are and how much you kind of buy into the process. Um, so if you kind of think about like a, like a typical multi-use kind of venue, um, seeing kind of upwards of like two thirds of your members using the app is kind of entirely reasonable. Um, but I think you can get way better than that if you make it kind of almost an operational requirement. So if you say the only way to get into the gym is to have a slot booked on the gym floor, which is probably going to be a COVID and opening requirement, and you make the app kind of the way to do that, your app adoption is now kind of 100%. Because if you, you have members who want to come to the gym, they have to get the app, they have to book the slot. So this is kind of the app developer's dream that you've basically shoehorned a function in to make sure every one of your customers has to use it. Uh, what's really kind of fun about that for us is if you're using the app, just open it up to book your slot, you're then seeing, oh, there's a special offer running. Oh, there's a challenge running. Oh, there's this other feature. Oh, this is a new training plan they've launched. And you, by having them open the app to do the transaction, they're now seeing all those ancillary benefits, all those extra kind of things that make them feel good, help them work out, help them achieve their goals and keep the membership running longer. So yeah, by having this forced usage model um, is fabulous in terms of kind of user engagement. Mm. Is there any resistance from the from gym owners saying their members don't want to do the app or do they generally all fall in line? And, and that, it's, it's obviously the way things are going, but sort of treading that careful line. Yes. The biggest one we kind of tend to get is if you think about like a like a public leisure center, 
where they've got like a huge community of you know, every agent of the sun who are going, oh yeah, I've got this gym member who's sort of 70 years old who, who might not be able to. Um, I found an alarming amount of 70 year olds do actually have iPhones after some digging. Um, but I mean, if you've got like one user in your whole facility who can't do this, as an operator, you can flex around that, you can work to that individual. But if you can get kind of 99% of your people in that app, it makes your life so much easier. Yeah, agree. Actually, if, agree. We, if we talk about the elderly, what's really important to them are features such as, you know, tracking your, your workout results, also your health, your bio age that Chris uh, touched on earlier. This is really important, um, you know, also for, for the elderly, because they want to monitor their progress. They want to they want to see, OK, is this actually doing me any good that I, you know, keep sweating in, in the gym facility all the time? And while you might not see something in the in the in the mirror straight away, those tools such as the activity levels and the bio age help you to understand, well, actually it's a process and I'm moving forward. Um, and that's really what, what people are after. Mm. So, so you talk about things like the bio age, that was another question. Now, obviously my, my previous understanding of Legion was it was a digital strength product and the bio age obviously ties into that. Can you input data from regular workouts? So in terms of what you're lifting to give you, to give you the information around the bio age or does it have to be from the digital strength product? Absolutely. What you can do, um, you can also, I mean, obviously, if you have connected equipment, it ties into the product straight away, so you don't have to put it in. But what you can also do is not only use, you know, traditional machines, you know, the, the regular chest press, you could also do body weight exercises, which is incredibly important at this moment, you know, when members uh, cannot come to the facility or when you're allowed to reopen, but some are still kind of nervous you know, to return back to the facilities because they don't know the situation. So we do have options for all scenarios um, to make those features work. Okay. Right. Two more questions from me, and then I've got one from one from somebody previously. Um, in terms of the, the training plans in the app, there's a pre-recorded library. Obviously that's video instruction of exercises. Can gym owners upload their own video access of exercises and workout library? So the workout library, kind of every um, exercise has a little animation next to it to show you how it's done yeah, in the description. Right. Um, but within those training plans, you can build whatever you want. Um, you can look at our 1400 different like individual exercise moves, string them together in something that works for the particular equipment you have in your building, the kind of members and kind of experience you offer, or even like an individual person's need. So yeah, those training plans are like step-by-step -step guides. So you know, you're doing this bench press, then you're going to do these crunches, then you're going to do this run, then you're going to do these lifts. And you can build that sequence out exactly as you would do, like in the old days on like a paper training card, but it's all digital and it's all kind of connected. In their hand as they walk Abs around. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So on the flip side, the big the big thing at the minute, obviously, we've got an opening day now, so it's probably going to drop off, but in terms of Zoom classes and, and that sort of thing, is there any, any features within the app to facilitate that or plans to moving forward? Yeah. Um, so when you set up um, your sort of Google Calendar for your bookings, there is an option to kind of put the like a Zoom URL into that booking calendar, um, and our system will recognise, hey, that's a Zoom link. This isn't an in-person activity, or this is an online activity. So kind of the interface changes. It demonstrates this is a live class. Click here to launch Zoom or or Microsoft Teams or I don't know, whatever else you're using to get streaming video. It's just a URL. You tap on that and it activates. Um, if you're kind of precious about your video links and don't want them kind of getting shared out to all and sundry, um, there is a feature where it hides that link until kind of, you know, half an hour before the session starts. So you don't like screenshot it and send it to all your friends on WhatsApp. You kind of go, right, workout's about to start, the screen unlocks, you click it, you go straight in. There's not as much time for somebody to start rampant workout class piracy around you. Yeah, yeah, that's understandable. Well, that's good. It's good that it's included, and it's going to be interesting to see once gyms reopen on the twelfth. And I know over the previous lockdowns that online and Zoom classes, as hugely popular as they've been because they're a necessity, they have dropped off with many operators. So it'll be interesting to see how they carry on in this hybrid world. So yeah, it definitely needs to be there. It's, so. it's it's a real effort to keep that content running. Um, but I certainly think right now it's kind of really important. Um, I mean, I still, I still think physical gyms are, are, are the best thing, you know, proper equipment, proper ventilation. I'm not tripping over my cat or the coffee table trying to do something in the house. Um, 
But, you know, when I am stuck at home or if like a new regional lockdown happens or whatever, you know, the ability for my gym to let me know they care about me and they want me to keep active even when they can't get into the building, I think is super important. So even if like you're doing like a couple of things a week, just to let customers know we're here, we still care, we're still working for you to keep you healthy. is as much of a valid kind of emotional impact as it is like a physical one to customers. Right. Last question. This one came from uh, actually came from Guy. I think we all know Guy is one of our retention experts. So um, he's asking a question more around inductions and reinductions from members and and what your views are in terms of of, of of how we use them when we reopen. And is it a reason to explain processes or increase interaction and rapport or reduce injury or or a combination really? So what's your thoughts on inductions and reinductions once we open? Um, kind of really important. I think there's. <laughs> Kind of teaching people how equipment work is part of the induction. That, you probably remember what a treadmill does. That's that's okay. But your physical situation will have changed over the last year, depending on what you've been doing. You know, if you've been stuck in a home office for the last year and barely gone out, you know, that would affect your health. Um, if you've, you know, just been outside running all the time, that would affect your health. So the induction is part of the health assessment, I think is going to be super important. And I think, like you said, you know, there are differences now, there are restrictions now, operationally, we're all going to be behaving quite differently. So if you can take that time to kind of remind people, you know, here are the new rules of the road. This is what we do in our, in our gym now to keep you safe and to keep our buildings open and successful. Uh, it's a great touch point. And people have been starved for company for the last year. You know, if I could go and spend 20 minutes talking to a real human being right now, I'd dump off this call and I'd go and do it. Because I've not seen human beings in a year so an opportunity to go and speak to my gym instructor again, to say hello, to catch up, to figure out what I'm doing, I think would be so valuable in keeping me active and keeping me happy and then keeping my membership running. So yeah, do it. Make them bookable as well. You know, go online, book a time with kind of Big Dave, go in and see him and ha you know, have a catch up, figure out what you need to do. Would you do them individually or groups? So back in the day, I used to do the group inductions when we had to get through a lot of people and you lose an element of that personal touch, but depending on what you're trying to deliver? I think it depends. It depends on how big your gym is, how busy it is, and, and how many members of staff you've got and all of that. Um, mm. I think a group one's great for some of those basics, like here are the rules of the road, here's what we're doing, here's things to pay attention to, make sure you wash your hands, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Great in a group. If I want to go sit down and go, yeah, I've, I've spent a year sitting on the sofa eating Cheetos, I probably want to do that on a one-to-one -one basis. So. You know, in your calendar, set up group sessions, set up individual sessions, you know, do whatever you want on those to kind of work for your customers, because you know how your customers work in your gym and just build like a booking plan that works to that for you. Fantastic. I agree on all of that. So that's really, really cool. Um, that's all the questions that have come through. So guys, uh, I just want to say a huge thank you for jumping on uh, hosting the first webinar with us. Um, it's been really useful. We're going to repost this video in the group for anybody who hasn't been able to jump on and watch. So um, yeah, any questions, um, fire them through on the group, on the comments, and we'll, we'll put the contact details for the guys as well. So um, much appreciated and thank you for joining. Thanks to thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thanks guys.